Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video, I want to answer a couple of questions that come up periodically regarding factory design utilities. Specifically, what can we do with asset tags? So, asset tags can be automated, but there, there's a little bit of some difficulty accessing them in the drawing environment. So what I'm going to do today is give you a workaround where we can automate the asset tag and just up at the uh, up front, you can use custom I properties, parameters, lots of different stuff to generate an asset tag. I'm going to use the title I property because I want to be able to grab that and use that in a, in a drawing file as well. So just to kind of set a little bit of the stage here. So I've already taken what is one of the common system trays, or I'm sorry, uh, the system asset cable tray and I've converted it to my own version. That allows me to modify it, edit it, etc. So I've already taken the time to do that. Inside of this particular model, if I edit it in place, you'll see that I've created uh, an extra parameter here called index number, and I've also set it as a key value. I'm actually gonna be controlling that behind the scenes using iLogic because I've talked with some people recently where they want to identify every single piece of cable tray with a unique serial number. So I'm going to use asset tag, but it has to be a sequential item. So even if it's the same size, we want to know that this is item one of the same size, item two of the same size, etc. So that's what's going on there. Now I've also created an iLogic rule which will take the parameter and some text. So I'm using just generic text, cable tray, CT, index number, I'm converting the width and length to a string and then putting that all together and I'm assigning it to the title. And I'll explain why I use the title when I get to the drawing. And once that executes, I wanna make sure it updates the model. So that's what's going on in the part itself. So I've already placed some assets and I've got two that are the same size, these two. I've got a shorter member and then I've got a longer one as well. So just kind of giving a little bit of variety. And then what we're doing inside of the assembly, the actual layout file is I have an iLogic rule. And part of this is my classic approach to asset tags. So first of all, we have to grab some stuff from the factory just to make sure we're accessing the API of the factory. And then it's very similar to lots of things you do in an assembly. We're gonna cycle through all of the components. I'm also gonna set the stage to access the browser. That way we can highlight items on screen and know which ones we're accessing. And then because of a recent interaction I had with the customer where they were very keen on having that unique index number, even if items were the same length, size, width, etc. We wanted to be able to serialize them with a unique ID. I'm gonna create my own indexing number and start it at one. And so we'll kind of look through this. I'm using a function and subroutine base. So this is my main subroutine or my main routine. And basically I just check to see if it's a factory asset or not. And that's just some code right here. This is a function. It checks to see if this particular model in occurrence is a factory instance. And if it is, awesome, we'll move on. If it's not, then we'll just kind of, or I'm sorry, we'll execute the rest of the code. And if it's not an asset, we'll just move on to the next in, uh, occurrence. Now, when we get in here though, what I'm trying to do is uh, not only is it an asset, but I'm checking to see if it's a cable tray. Now you could write your code more elegantly. I just wanted to get an example out here so we're checking the title, and if the left two characters are CT, I know it's a cable tray. There's a number of ways we could have figured that out. Then I'm going to use the factory API to update that index number. So now I'm grabbing the number from the layout. I'm gonna push that into the model. I'm gonna generate, or I should say execute that iLogic code to update the title. And then I'm going to index that CT number by one. So now we'd get uh, number two for the next one, number three and so on and so forth. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab the node, find that node, we're gonna select it and then we're running our last, this is actually a subroutine, not a function, where we basically assign 
the title to the asset tag. So some of this is just generic stuff. We have to look at the instance, find the group name, find out if it's an asset tag. And if so, we can assign the prop, prop value for the asset tag. And I'm using the title occurrence name. So please note, you could build this a lot of different ways. You could use parameters, you could use a custom I property. I'm using title just to make the drawing easier. And you don't have to show a message at the end, but I like to verify, hey, here's my property value for the asset tag. And we're just saying it's title. Okay, we can even give this a little bit better name, I guess, call this asset tag. So we actually know what we're talking about. Should have done that earlier. Go ahead and save that. Close it. I don't usually do save and run on iLogic code. I like to save and close it. And then I can save my model. And then we can right click, run the rule. And there you go. So you highlight it so you can see it's index number of one. There's the asset tag. And then here comes the second one, asset tag. See number two, index number two. So it's gonna be very sequential and it depends on how you place them in the model but it is going to set a unique asset tag for each one with that sequential sequence or index number. So there you have it. So that worked great. Now I've also come over here and I've uh, created a drawing. This is why I ended up using a custom symbol based on the title I property is because even though these are unique instances for factory design, it's gonna treat each one like it's a unique part number you may or may not want to group those together. There's different ways we could do that. So of course you could make the part number the same as the asset tag. Um, it's up to you. So you could do that. I'm just trying to give you a variety of potential solutions if you don't want to modify the part number, but you could group the parts list via um, things like stock number, and then that would work well. But in this scenario, it's treating everything as the same. So if I tried to balloon it, which if you want to give it a go, I did create a balloon style based on the asset tag that's used in the title. It's going to say varies because that's four different <laughs> unique identifiers and they're all using the same part number. So it got confused. So you could create your own custom symbol. So what I've done here is I created a symbol using the title and it's actually going to look instead of trying to group it by the part number, it's just going to put it all together here or it's going to just grab each one individually. So I created an asset tag with the title. It's just a custom symbol that's grabbing that property. And there's the assets with the tagging. So it's a workaround that I'm using right now. And I'll show you why I use title in a second, but you can see it is identifying each one with a unique asset tag. So here's the reason why I use title is if you come into your sketch symbols and we like to edit this definition, the text that I used, when you look at the properties of the model without iLogic, you just can't access custom properties. So I picked title because this is a property I don't use very much. Um, and so it's really easy to do without having to do lots of other stuff. So that's where I'm coming from using the title. You could use summary, key, you know, whatever you want to use. You could use subject. There's lots of different properties you could use, whichever ones you're not currently using actively, you could make that the candidate. And <clears throat> that's what we're using to drive that particular symbol. So that's how it works. It's a workaround, ideally speaking, and there's an idea out there. I'll link it in the video description below. We would love to have the Autodesk developers for Factory give us access to the asset tag so that we wouldn't have to do a workaround. We can just grab the tag directly and not have to piggyback some other inventor I property. We would rather just have our own custom I property for the asset tag or even better, just access the asset tag itself. Anyway, so there's a lot there, a couple different things going on, but those are some common questions that come up. It's a little bit more advanced working behind the scenes to set up your asset tag, but it can easily be automated once you get used to the, the general format. And then I'm using the workaround of the title I property in order to populate the asset tag so that I can extract it with the custom symbol here at the end. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.